okay, we're back again with the moms getting woken up, but this time I want us to get the standard deviation. All right, so now that we've tacked on standard deviation, let's go find it for the moms and how many times they've gotten woken up, and then we'll go to Nancy and see how many times she's going to class, or at least see how much she's deviating from her average in terms of going to class. All right, anytime you're asked to find standard deviation and you're on a table problem, consult this trait table. I'm on a table, right? I'm on this column. They've asked me to find standard deviation. I'm on this row. Here's where they overlap. So I need to do one bar stats L1, L2, read S, but S is gonna be blank, so maybe I'll read sigma. All right, so let's do that for these moms. Let me clear out my lists. Okay. And then let's see what we got here. All right, so these moms, we had zero, one, two, three, four, and five. And then they had those probabilities. Okay, so we've got our variables in L1, our probabilities in L2, and we're gonna run one of our stats, L1, L2. So let me go back to my home screen. We've got stat. Calc, enter, L1, comma, L2. Let me hit enter. We remember our mean, right? The average mom was woken up about 2.1 times after midnight. S is blank, so there is my standard deviation. And it is Friday night, so we're going three, de or three decimals, so 1.025. So I would say here that my standard deviation is 1.025. And like always, the units of your statistics are the same as your variables. So this is times awoken after midnight. So what this, these statistics are trying to tell us is that on average, moms were getting, up, getting woken up about 2.1 times per night. And then they deviated by that by about 1.025 times. So if you're within a deviation of the mean, you're getting woken up somewhere between one and three times a night, all right? Okay, so with that, let's revisit Nancy and see what her deviation was, all right? If I remember, she was, she was going to class almost, usually she was going three days a week, but she, she was cutting a couple times, right? She did have some times where she wasn't going to class all three days that week. So let's see what was going on with Nancy. Again, I'm gonna clear out my lists. Let me get my calculator back. Let's clear out my list and let's get Nancy's data in there. All right, here we go, go back home, okay? Usually for me, whenever I've hit clear lists, I like to just clear that out again. I can't tell you how many times I've had that command up there. I accidentally hit enter on my calculator and then it clears all my data out one more time. So anyways, once I've done this, we'll go stat calc, let's go L1 comma L2. And we find out that Nancy, yes, she was averaging 2.74 days per week in terms of going to class, but she deviated by that um, on average by about 0.58, uh, I should say point, I'm gonna go three decimals, right? It is Friday, so 0.577. That is gonna be Nancy's deviation. All right, don't forget those units on there. Okay, so with that, we're closing out the first third, I would say, of this chapter. So we've gone through this column. We've talked about how to make a PDF, how to do a mean, a standard deviation, how to calculate uh, probabilities. If you ever get a backwards problem, that means you wanna read probabilities from the bottom row of your table and then answer questions about the top row of your table. 
we're gonna kind of do, like I said, the middle third. It doesn't follow one of these two columns. It's something called the law of large numbers. So I will talk to you about the law of large numbers and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do the binomial distribution. All right, so we've done this column. I'm gonna take a little breather, do the law of large numbers, and then we're gonna talk about this column. All right, I'll see you in a few.